All right, so good morning, everybody. My name is Jesse, and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. If you're joining us for the first time, I know we got a bunch of new kids today. We are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world through over 50 monthly live, free, interactive broadcasts. We go into caves, we go up to space, we go all over the planet. I think we broadcast from 90 countries now, so we're always trying to bring you guys the best stories to keep you guys excited, enthused, and ready to learn about the natural world and the cosmos around you. So, today is the first program after our Week of Wonder. Last week was our craziest week ever as an organization. We did 32 programs. It was a little insane. A lot of fun and all of those programs are on our YouTube channel if you guys want to check them out. For today we could not be starting off the week with a better organization and I'm going to get to them in just a minute but what I want to highlight first is our new partnership. So for years now we've been operating for six years and one of the big things teachers have always asked is how do we keep the learning going after the session? We've had our minds blown, we're all pumped after these 45 minute programs. What can our kids do to get engaged and involved and save the natural world and save wildlife and do all this stuff? And so this year, we've partnered with a group called Earth Rangers. So Earth Rangers is Canada's kids conservation organization. They are branching out, they're going international, and they are encouraging kids to get their app, to take part, to learn more, all sorts of cool features of that. I don't want to steal their thunder, so I'm going to play a brief little video for you guys to kick off the program, and then we're going to dive in with our friends at the Toucan Rescue Ranch. Let me bring that up for you guys really quick, and you guys can check this out and dive in with all that they are up to. <coughs> This is Kyla from Earth Rangers, and we are the Kids Conservation Organizer. By curling up, Millie's face, belly, oh. and legs are all hidden and protected from Sorry, folks, let me pop back in. Apparently, we can't hear the video. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Let me play my entire screen and see if that works for you guys in the second half of this. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, let me bring that up and see if we can make that work for you guys. Hopefully, this works. Let me know in the chat if you can hear this instead, and we'll make this a little bit better, okay? Perfect. Oh, dear. Sorry about that, everybody. All right, we're going to make this full, and we'll make this full, and we'll go. By her armor, which are these bony plates covered in super tough skin made from keratin, the same material that your nails are made out of. So good luck getting through that. But no matter how prepared armadillos like Millie are to defend against predators, there are other dangers that her armor won't protect her from in the wild. Threats like habitat loss and climate change are making life difficult for lots of animals in the wild, and they need our help. And that's exactly where you come in as an earth ranger and an animal saving hero. Right now is the best time to get involved. As an earth ranger, you can support important conservation work for animals right here in Canada, like river otters in the Saskatchewan River Delta and grizzly bears in Canada's north. You can also do things like our missions, where you can get involved to make a difference in your own community. There's over 20 different missions to choose from, like Live Love Local, where we challenge you to shrink your carbon footprint by eating food grown locally, or H2O Harvester, where you can make a rain barrel to collect rainwater to help prevent harmful runoff from polluting local waterways. Just download the Earth Rangers app and become an official Earth Ranger member. You'll also have access to things like the Earth Rangers podcast, daily fun trivia questions, Wildfire blog, and so much more. But it gets even better. 
you'll earn points for everything you do as an Earth Ranger. And as you level up, you habitats, animals, and bonus items for your avatar will get unlocked. Now, Millie and I have a special gift for you. If you use the code Millie in the Earth Rangers app, you'll get 25 bonus points to start you on your animal saving journey. That's Millie, M-I-L-L-I-E. Don't forget to write that down. And remember when you get home, don't forget to download the free Earth Rangers app to start saving animals today. Bye everyone. Nice, all right, let's come back to us. I'll stop sharing my screen there. Honestly, for me personally, it's been really, really fun. I have had the chance to work with Earth Rangers for years in a variety of contexts. The fact that we can bring them in here and exploring by the seat of your pants with a special code, special app is really, really awesome. Thank you for letting me know that the video was <laughs> irony abounding. Um, so we had a chance to hang out with Millie there, our armadillo. And one of the creatures that you can find or one of the places you can find armadillos is in lovely Costa Rica, where we're going to go today to hang out with our friends at the Toucan Rescue Ranch. So as I said at the top of the broadcast, a couple weeks ago, we hung out with them with their sloths. Uh, we've done over 50 programs at the Toucan Rescue Ranch. They're one of the coolest organizations in the world. And today we're going to hang out with Andrea, who's going to take us to show us some of their amazing birds, the namesakes of the Toucan Rescue Ranch. And so without further ado, thank you so much for joining us, Andrea. Take us away. <laughs> no, thank you, Jesse, always for the help and the support and everything. And now that I see Millie the Armadillo, if you guys are interested in seeing um, the sloths, we have our first ever sloth that we got to rescue. Her name is also Millie. So you can go and check her out in other um, face, um, YouTube videos. And um, thank you guys so much for joining today. I really hope you enjoy seeing all of her feathered friends. We're definitely going to see some toucans, of course. Hence the name of the rescue. <laughs> uh, we're also going to see some parrots, some macaws, um, and some owls. So I really hope you guys have lots of really fun questions about them. So to tell you, tell you a little bit about the Toucan Rescue Ranch, we are a rescue center and sanctuary here in Costa Rica that was started back in 2004 by our founder, Leslie. Um, as the name says, we started rescuing toucans. So Leslie, she was actually born in the U.S. but raised here in Costa Rica. So in her early years here in Costa Rica, of course, she got to hang out with a lot of different um, wildlife here in Costa Rica. Everywhere you go here in Costa Rica, you will definitely see at least three different species of birds. <laughs> I can assure you that. Um, so she... She always grew with love with birds, especially macaws and parrots. That Those are like her first love. She really, really likes them. And then she came back in 2003 here to Costa Rica. And um, she volunteered at another facility that is now closed. But she started um, working with the macaws and the parrots and everything. And she got to learn how to, you know, run a place like this, such as a rescue center. And there she realized that it was not the macaws and parrots that needed her help, rather than the toucans and other birds that other people didn't want to work with them. For some reason, toucans were not as popular years ago, and there were not a lot of organizations that wanted to rescue them. So there, that's where she saw the need of having a place such as this one, and she started to Toucan Rescue Ranch in 2004. So <laughs> we have six different species of toucans here in Costa Rica out of the 40 different species of toucans in the world. And I will show you guys today four different species of toucans. Of course, one of them I'm sure that most of you guys are going to be familiar with. So I'm actually going to switch my camera around and show you guys <laughs> our first toucan. So there you go. <laughs> this toucan is Romeo. You can see that Romeo is really, really handsome. He lives by his name. <laughs> He's actually our oldest toucan here at the Toucan Rescue Ranch. He arrived back in 2008. So just imagine, she's, he's over 10 years old. Right now he's grooming himself. He just had his breakfast. So it's time for a little grooming and a little sun um, bathing. <laughs> oh, and scratchy time as well. So you can see that Romeo, he is a rainbow bill toucan or a seal bill toucan. These guys have a lot of names. You can definitely see why they're called rainbow bill toucans. If I get closer, you will get to see, thank you, Jesse. <laughs> uh, you will get to see that he has all of the colors from the rainbow just in his bill. 
<laughs> so that's pretty accurate. <laughs> Those guys are really, really common on the tropical rainforest in Central and South America. And of course, they're one of the easiest species of chickens to recognize because of those colors. <laughs> right now he's getting curious about some food passing by <laughs> in front of his enclosure. <laughs> Hi Romeo, what are you what are you doing? <laughs> we used to have another toucan called Juliet. So we had Romeo and Juliet, but unfortunately we just have now uh, Romeo over here. <laughs> so Romeo is our oldest toucan we have on the property. Let me show you one of our youngest toucans we have on the property. He's also a rainbow bill toucan. Let me go to this side and introduce you guys to Mango. <laughs> Hi, Mango. <laughs> Mango is a juvenile rainbow bill toucan. <laughs> he is full of energy. He's also really, really funny to, uh, to chase around in his enclosure. He never stays still, so he's really bad for tours actually because <laughs> we never know where he is gonna be <laughs> unfortunately for mango we had to rescue him a couple months ago because he uh the tree he was nesting on toucans they nest in trees in tree cavities in holes and everything that are made by woodpeckers and parrots and macaws the tree he was nesting on unfortunately somebody cut that tree down I don't know if it was by accident or if it was on purpose, but sadly, Mango was the only survivor from his family. We got to rescue another sibling, but unfortunately, she passed away. And now we just have Mango. <laughs> we have been helping raising him since he got here. Really, really ugly, featherless and tiny. Now he has most of his feathers. He's really, really handsome. <laughs> We're still not sure of his fate, if he's going to be rewilded or not. So about that, the Toucan Rescue Ranch is a rescue center. What we do is that we rescue, rehabilitate, and rewild as many animals as possible. So we want to be able to see as many animals going back into the wild as we can, including the toucans, of course. But of course, if an animal is too used to people, too friendly towards people, um, does not know how to go and find food or you know, defend themselves or fly around well, then unfortunately, they will have to stay under human care for the rest of their lives. And that's where the sanctuary side of the Toucan Rescue Ranch comes into place. And we give a home for the rest of their lives to a lot of animals that will have to stay here with us for the rest of their lives. So we still are not sure about Mango. I do know that he has some foraging behavior, so he loves to chase around um, insects and some other animals that are around his enclosure sometimes, especially insects and spiders. So talking about their food, I'm going to give you guys a couple seconds for you to think and maybe write down on your notebooks. What do you guys think two can see in the wild? Take a look at mango. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, what we can do, Andrea, is I can bring in class to see what they think, too. Okay, yeah, even better. Okay. How about this? So, Miss Scaff's class, what do we think the toucan here eats? What do we think mango eats? Mangoes! Mangoes! <laughs> yeah, mangoes. they can eat mangoes. <laughs> okay, good guess. How about Mr. Ramey's class? What do you guys think? Apple fruit. Apple fruit. Fruit, fruit. 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 Okay, okay, yeah. Miss Armada. Guys, what do you think? Okay, what do you think? Bananas. They're saying bananas? bananas. Bananas, yeah. We are very frugivorous together. I like it. <laughs> so you guys are really, really right. So they actually do eat fruits, and they are mainly frugivorous, so they mainly eat fruits, but they also need protein on their diets. So instead of being frugivorous, they should actually be called omnivores because they eat, eat, they eat fruits and meat. So the protein and the meat that they get is from smaller insects, spiders, smaller mammals, smaller birds, eggs from other birds, lizards, snakes, frogs, you guys name it. These guys can eat a lot of different things. <laughs> um, I have even seen pictures of toucans eating venomous snakes, which is pretty, pretty amazing. <laughs> so, of course, 
it's not that they are really good hunters. They are, they are mainly opportunistic animals. So if they see the opportunity to, you know, get a bird or get a, a rodent or something that is on the ground, they will go and take that chance and they will eat that animal. So they're pretty interesting animals. Unfortunately, when people have them as pets, and I think you guys will agree with me that these guys should not belong in a house as a pet, um, when people have them as pets, they do not give them the correct diet. So they, a lot of people only think that these guys only eat fruits. And as I said, they also need the meat. So when, whenever they do not get meat or the proper diet, they will get sick. And you can see with Mango here that he has a lot of bright colors and his bill is super, super healthy and bright. So you can tell when a toucan is not um, healthy when they are sick because they will start losing their colors and their colors will be a little pale and everything. So you'll definitely tell that they are feeling sick. Hi, Mango. <laughs> this guy over here, he loves to try to <laughs> eat my phone, <laughs> which of course is not a good idea. <laughs> then let's move over with another species of toucan. This would be Moonshine. Moonshine is a chestnut mandible toucan or a yellow throated toucan as well. These guys have a lot of different common names. So chestnut mandible toucans they are actually the largest species of toucan here in costa rica and the second largest species of toucan in the world so the largest species of toucan would be the toco toucan uh those guys live in brazil and the amazon forest if you guys have ever watched the movie rio you will be familiar with the toco toucans <laughs> because they're one of the main characters in that movie <laughs> so for you guys to remember Toucans only live in Central and South America and in some islands on the Caribbean side. So they are really well distributed alongside <laughs> the Americas. <laughs> They're pretty awesome animals. Um, we already talked about their diet. Let's talk a little bit of why these guys have such a long bill. And maybe you guys can also help me um, answer this question. So what do you guys think? Why? Why do they, how do they use that really long bill? Hmm, okay, decisions, decisions, people. If you're on YouTube and <laughs> you want to chime in too, by all means. Uh, but let's go to our, let's do reverse order this time. Miss Armada, uh, yep. us. what do they use that super long bill for, kids? What do, do they you guys do? Why do we use it? What do they use that for? <laughs> to eat. To eat. Okay, yeah. I like it, Mr. Ramey. How about you guys? To eat, <laughs> to eat fish. Okay, that's interesting. I like the change. We went from fruit to fish, but to eat, <laughs> we're stuck with eating. Miss Scott, uh -huh. do you think eating too or something else? <laughs> Got a little bit of an echo there. We don't want to. There you go. Unfortunately, here, let's bring you back. Let's see. If you have a second device on, it's going to echo for you guys. But. Okay. Got a bunch of answers. This is great, guys. Thank you so much for the enthusiasm. Andrea, what are they using for? <laughs> Okay, well, of course, they use it for eating, and it actually comes in handy when you have to go into hollow cavities in the tree to, you know, look for insects and some other animals that are living inside the trees, such as squirrels, for example. Um, but they actually use their bills to regulate their own body temperature. So basically, they have like an air conditioning and a radiator on their bills. So some people say that these guys, they have a lot of blood vessels across their bill. And so what they do on a hot day is that they send blood flow to their bill. They will open it up a little bit and let the cooler air cool themselves down a little bit. But if they were cold or during the night when they're sleeping, they actually send blood flow to the rest of their bodies. And they put their bill underneath their wing and they basically warm themselves up like that. So that is pretty interesting from them. <laughs> So let's go and find the other two species of toucans. <laughs> I'm sure that you're going to love them as well. They actually do not resemble as much like the other toucans. <laughs> Great, because all of them are out right now. So we have gobbles over here. Gobbles. <laughs> uh, oh, no, that was actually Echo. Gobbles is at the very, very back eating his breakfast. I don't know if you guys see him. And then here's Delta. 
So you can see that these guys, they do not have as many colors as the other toucans we just saw. These guys would be the colored Aracaris or Arasaris. And then on this other side, we have Scooby. <laughs> Hi, Scooby. These guys are the fiery billed Arasaris. <laughs> they look a little bit like the colored Dorosaurus, but of course these guys have a really orange bill, really, really bright, super beautiful. Something really interesting and super important about these species is that they are an endemic species to Costa Rica and Panama, which means that they can only be found in the southern Pacific side of Costa Rica and a little part of western Panama, nowhere else in the world. Instead, the Aracaris, the colored Aracaris, you can find them in many parts here in Costa Rica and also in some other countries in Central America. And this is Gobbles. <laughs> Hi. Were you enjoying your breakfast? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let me put them on a single frame so you can see the differences. So colored Aracaris, they are slightly smaller than the fiery billed Aracaris. And of course, Scooby, he has an orange peel and Gobbles doesn't. <laughs> so you can see some differences there. Um, something really interesting about the Aracaris is that they are family toucans. They live in families. And so they have their own hierarchy. And so there's only one breeding pair, one mom and one dad. Um, they are the only ones that will have babies. And then the other members of the family, like the aunts and siblings and uncles, they will help the parents raise the chicks. So this is not like common behavior you see with birds. You see this mostly with mammals, such as the wolves. As you guys know, wolves live in packs. And there are the alphas that are going to be the only ones to breed. And then the other members of the pack will help them raise the puppies. The same thing happens with these guys. And then last but not least, and to follow up with the other species of birds we have here at the ranch, <laughs> we couldn't be complete if I didn't show you guys to Junior. <laughs> Junior here, he is another juvenile toucan. He is a chestnut mandible toucan baby, just like Moonshine. He's also full of energy, so <laughs> such as Mango. <laughs> <laughs> you can see that he is really playful and especially with people so this is why we were not able to rewild junior we actually do not know the exact story from junior what we know is that he was taken to the release site another property that we have and uh, the people who brought him there told us that they found him in the side of the road and that he was not flying so he's a baby, so of course he was not flying. But then when we got to receive him and when, when, when we were treating him and everything, we found out that this guy was actually really, really used to people. And he did not have as many toucan behaviors as he should have by this age, um, especially fearing humans because <laughs> we're one of their predators. Um, and so we actually believe that maybe Junior... Um, these people had, that brought him to the release site were keeping him as a pet, or maybe they were trying to feed him and <laughs> try to keep him well, but they didn't make it, so that's why he, they um, brought Junior to us. Unfortunately, we put him with other toucans, but it did not work. He did not have any like natural behaviors of any kind, so we definitely had to take the decision to you know, put him with us, and so he will get to live with us for the rest of his life. And I see that the camera is a little blurry, so let me change it just a second. <laughs> and, okay, I see it's better. <laughs> Hi, Junior. So yeah, he's going to stay here as a permanent resident, and we will give him lots and lots of love. <laughs> so, do you guys want to go and see some other animals? I'm sure you are ready to go and see the macaws. So we can go and see them. They're actually right behind me. <laughs> right now they are a little quiet because they just ate. They just had their breakfast. So hopefully they're going to be down on the enclosure. So it's going to be a little easier to see them. And what I see are some squirrels actually stealing <laughs> the macaws food. <laughs> So I'm getting there. Give me just a second. And unfortunately, all of them are down here eating. So you will definitely have the chance to see them from up close. And 
There you go. <laughs> so, over here, the <laughs> squirrel just went away. <laughs> over here, you can see that we have two different species of macaws. Here, it is a little easier to see that. So, we have the great green macaw over there, and we also have the red or scarlet macaw right next to it. So, we only have two different species of macaws here in Costa Rica. We have the great green macaw, that is one of the largest species of macaws, and we have the red or scarlet macaw, that are one of the most common ones. So, <laughs> The great green ones here in Costa Rica, if you ever come here, you can only find them on the Caribbean side of Costa Rica. But if you go to the Pacific side of Costa Rica, you will get to see the red macaws. And you can see a small squirrel over here on the other enclosure. <laughs> She's waiting her turn to go and steal this macaw's food. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, you know that the macaws have a really, really large beak that they use to crack open seeds. Actually, that macaw over here, you can see that she has something on her beak. Uh, she's eating a rambutan. So rambutans, they have a really, really hard seed. And it's really easy for them to crack them open. Same as the almond um, seeds. They're really, really strong. But these guys have managed to, you know, learn how to crack them open. So you definitely do not want to be bit by a macaw. <laughs> uh, you will get to have, like, a really, really severe wound on your finger. <laughs> hey, you just dro dropped your rambutan. <laughs> Here's another one eating another rambutan. They're also eating some papaya and some corn, and I don't see what else they're eating because their plate is too way far away from me. <laughs> so, macaws. These guys are endangered, especially the great green macaws. They're critically endangered, so they're one step away from extinction, unfortunately. And it is mainly due to deforestation, loss of her habitats, and also poaching. So if you go to a pet, a pet store, years ago, most of the pet stores, the way they had a lot of babies and a lot of macaws was that they came to the rainforest in some um, Central and South American countries where you can find the macaws, and they would start stealing the babies from the nests so they can take them to their uh, pet stores and start selling them. Right now, it is supposed to be illegal, but I do know that it still happens in some countries that a lot of people go and try to steal the macaws, um, the baby macaws from their parents so they can sell them and so that you can have them as pets. Of course, these, are, these guys are wild animals. You should not have them as pets. Um, so it is really, really unfortunate that, you know, a lot of people have them as pets in their houses. And they need a lot of space. And, of course, they live for a long, long time. In the wild, macaws can live from around, like, 30 years. But in captivity, they can live to be up to 50 uh, or 70, 80 years. So it, they have a really, really long lifespan. So it's basically like a human. So can you guys imagine having a parrot or a pet for a your whole life it's a whole um commitment so it can also be a really really expensive commitment because of their diet <laughs> so <laughs> these guys are usually found in pairs or in groups of four or eight birds individuals and they like to fly around in groups <laughs> um i don't know if you guys have any questions <laughs> or we can leave them to the very end we can lead them to the very end if you want to show us one more thing. Let's head there and then we'll take our questions from all our live groups and our YouTube friends. Okay, awesome. awesome. So what do you want to see next? Do you want to see the parrots or do you want me to change with the owls? Ooh, let's check out owls. I mean, I love parrots, but I'm a, <laughs> little, I'm a real sucker for owls. So I'm going to as many different birds as we can today. But while we're waiting, I just want to give a shout out to Ms. Cochran, Ms. Petrantonio, Ms. Coxel, uh, Ms. Smith. If you guys want to, Ms. Kaseniak, if you guys want to share questions on YouTube, please do. We'd love to hear from you guys. And our live classes, of course, we will take you guys first when we dive in with the Q&A in just a minute. But let's check out some animals first together and have a little fun. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So I'm here with one of our species of owls. <laughs> 
So right there on the corner, you can see that we have one of the striped owls. Striped owls are one of the most common species of owls here in the Central Valley of Costa Rica. Of course, with owls, it is easier to hear them rather than to see them. <laughs> of course, they blend in really, really well with their environment. You can see that these striped owls have like um, some whitish and some brownish colors. So they can um, blend in with the, with the trees and the branches and everything. And you can see that this owl over here, she has like some ears on top of her head. Those are actually just feathers. Those are not her ears. Owls have asymmetric ears. So depending on the species, their ears will be at a different place. Some owls have their ears on the front of their faces. Some, ear, some owls have one ear on top of their faces and one ear on the bottom of their faces. So of course, that's for them to hear a lot better because you know that owls, they hunt at night when there's little to no um, light especially when, you know, it's the new moon and there's no light whatsoever. So they have to manage themselves with their really cool eyesight and also with their really cool um, sense of hearing. Let's go see if we have some other owls that are on the front. Oh, I actually see Olive over here. <laughs> there's Olive. So you can see that she's actually blending in quite well. Of course, it's really easy to see her because she's on an enclosure and we always know where she is. But if she was in the wild, in a tree, up on a tree, it would be really, really hard to see her. <laughs> then over here, <laughs> I don't know if you get to see them, but they are at the very, very back. We have the black and white owls. These guys are one of the largest species of owls as well. And I'm sure that they are the reason why there are so many legends here in Costa Rica and other Central American countries where people believe that owls are witches because they scream really, really weird. <laughs> and uh, I have here, I have heard the black and white um, owls screaming at night and it does resemble like a woman's scream <laughs> and then we have a barn owl over there her name is la diabla <laughs> the devil because of her story so as i was saying a lot of people think that these guys are evil spirits of course they're not they're just birds they're actually really really cute and they're really important for the ecosystem owls they control pests such as rodents um mice and um, a lot of other like pigeons and a lot of other animals so of course they're really really important for the ecosystem la diabla here unfortunately she was living on a church um, barn owls they always live in barns or in churches and the priest from this church um he didn't like it that there was like this evil person on his church so Unfortunately, he went up where she was with a broomstick and started hitting her with the broomstick until she was really, really uh, badly hurt. So he got to call us and we went to, there to help um, this owl. And unfortunately, she was not able to go back into the wild. And then this guy called us again saying if we could return the owl because there were so many pigeons and rats on his church. And he was already, um, you know, tired of cleaning all of that pigeon poop on the benches. So I really hope he learned his lesson and how important these guys are. <laughs> there are some differences between the barn owls and um, the other species of owls. So these guys are a whole separate family. Um, these are from the Titanida family and the other owls, they are from the Strigida family. So what tells like one of the main differences between both family of owls is that the barn owls have like a heart shaped face um around their faces i don't know if you get to see that with um, these owl and they do not have ripe owls so <laughs> there are so many differences between them and they are one of the um they're really really quiet when hunting which is pretty cool. Of course, rodents, they have a really nice sense of hearing. So if you have an owl that does not make any kinds of sounds when he is flying around, of course, it's going to be really, really hard for the rodents to start seeing and hearing that owl. And then last but not least, up there we have three spectacled owls. Actually, there's one over here. <laughs> 
this would be Mandela. <laughs> so spectacled owls are our largest species of owl here in Costa Rica. They are around like 80 centimeters long, so they're really, really big. <laughs> And one of the reasons why we have to rescue so many owls here in, Costa in the Toucan Rescue Ranch, sorry, is that unfortunately, some of them, when they're flying around at night, they will not see if there's a window, a wall, a car, or a fence in the middle, and they will hit those things. So some of them will die from the impact. Some of them will have to stay here with us because of their injuries. So Mandela, for example, he was cut up on a barbed wire fence. And uh, he injured his eye and also fractured his wing. And um, that's why we got to rescue him. And we also have to rescue a lot of owls and lots of other birds. Because when we are on our baby bird season here in Costa Rica, um, a lot of people, they find owls and birds on the ground. And they think that they were abandoned by their parents or that they are injured. So as you might know, birds, when they are learning how to fly, um, they have to fall from their nests. So them being on the ground, it's completely natural. It's not that their parents abandon them. Their parents are just looking for food. So if you guys ever find a baby animal, doesn't matter if it's a mammal or a bird, in the ground without their parents, do make sure that they are were actually abandoned by their parents. So you will have to wait for quite a while to actually make sure that they were not abandoned or that there's nothing wrong with them. But before taking them into your house or to a rescue center or a rehabber, make sure that they are um, abandoned or something like that. And then I wanted to finish the tour. I'm sure that some of you might be superhero fans. And I actually wanted to introduce you guys to Batman and Nightwing. <laughs> so this is Nightwing. And over there we have Batman. <laughs> So, Batman and Nightwing, they are bat falcons, and as their name says, these guys like to hunt bats, and they're really, really good at doing so. So, even though they hunt bats, they're not nocturnal, they are crepuscular, so they are active early in the morning or late on the evening. <laughs> and there he goes. <laughs> Unfortunately, both of them were hit by cars, and they got a fracture on one of their wings, so they're going to have to stay here with us for the rest of their lives as well. But they're doing really, really good. <laughs> very, very cool. Thank you so, so much for taking us to so many amazing words, Andrea. If you want to come back, we can see you. We'd love to have a bit of a conversation. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to head to our live classes first for some questions. Take some from YouTube. We've got about 10 minutes. So this is great. Um, in fact, what we're going to do is start with our Armada's group. So we've got a whole bunch of groups joining us in Fort Lauderdale today. Welcome to all of you uh, in Mays and Kansas. So a, an exciting diversity of classes live plus YouTube as well. Ms. Armada's group, if you want to kick us off with a question, Armada? Hey, guys. Yes, we have Kyla here. Kyla has a question. Go ahead, Judy. Kyla. How can they hear better with their, with their ears on the bottom? with them out, not on the top like that? Ooh. Well, that's actually a really nice question. So, of course, if you have an ear over here and an ear on, on the other side over here, um, depending where you're flying, you get to catch a lot of different sounds from different places. So our ears are located at the same spot over here, right? We can hear well, but owls, they need to hear even better. So basically, if their face um, acts like a huge antenna, and that's how they get to hear so much better during the night. I love this. Kyla, think about it when you're in your class, right? If someone's talking to you from over here, you hear it in this ear. The way you know that the sound's coming from there is that it hits this ear slightly before this ear. With owls, because they're different places, they can tell up and down as well, which we're not quite as good at. So it's a really, really cool thing in evolution. Very, very cool question. Uh, we've never yeah. heard this before. I like that. It's a great question. Um, Mr. Ramey's class. Come on in, guys. Mr. Ramey's joining us in Mays, Kansas with his grade fours. Come on up, guys. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Take your time. No hurry. Someone has a question for us today. That's great. You can't have tongues. You two can't they, have tongues? <laughs> they do have tongues. That's actually a really nice question. Their tongue, it looks like a tiny feather. And they cannot use it like the macaws and the parrots, for example. Their tongues, they use them to move around like the seeds and the fruit around their mouth so that it will be easier to manipulate them. But the toucans, they cannot do that. <laughs> so their tongue is really, really long. 
Um, and it does resemble like a feather. <laughs> Very cool question, guys. All right, Miss Scouts class, joining us in Fort Lauderdale. Come on up. Hopefully those devices are good. We can hear you guys properly this time. Right, yeah. Hey, everybody. You guys are like so hyped up before. I love it. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Come on. Give us. We'd love to hear from you. What do you have to say? What do you want to say? Um, how do how do they fly? How do they fly? How do they fly, Andrea? What's going well, on? Um, if you're referring to the toucans, they're actually really bad at flying. So because of their bill that is really long and it's quite heavy for them, they do not fly long distances. So they do not migrate. And they cannot go to like one place from Costa Rica to the other um, in one single day. So they actually have to fly from tree to tree to actually, you know, move around. They prefer to be hopping around on the branches because it's easier for them so they're really really good at hopping and jumping in between the branches but they're really bad at flying so what you can do when they start flying is that they flap their wings like five times and then they drop and then they flap them again and then they drop again and you will see that this pattern of uh, the toucans flying which is pretty cool and really funny to see that yeah i really encourage people look up toucans flying when you're done this broadcast you'll find them on youtube it's a really unique flight pattern you, you don't mistake a toucan for anything yeah for sure <laughs> awesome all right uh, let's head to youtube for a minute uh athena mm -hmm. in the Xeniax class wants to know if toucans and parrots are related they're not related um so parrots and macaws are related they're from the same family they are cetacids um, it's just that the macaws are larger than the parrots, of course, and also the parakeets. But the toucans and parrots are definitely n not related. They're completely different families, and they have completely different behaviors and patterns. Nice. All right, we're whipping through these guys. This is great. Sadie and Miss Smith uh, class want to know, how long have you been taking care of the birds, personally? Personally, well, I have been here for a year already. <laughs> I started here a year ago. Um, almost exactly. I do not get to take care of them per se. I am more here doing the tours and everything, but when I get to help, I always like to feed them and to clean their enclosures because that's what we do over here. Hopefully when you guys grow a little older, you can come and visit us and also, you know, volunteer here with us and help us do the daily chores, such as cleaning the enclosures and feeding the animals and giving toys to them and everything. Because it's a really, really fun way to help them. Very, very cool. Well, in the meantime, if you don't get the chance to visit in person just yet, uh, everyone should check out ToucanRescueRanch.org. I'll highlight this at the end. It's an amazing organization. They do such great work. We featured them on over the last three, four years and in dozens of broadcasts. So I really encourage you to check out their website. There's a lot to learn there. I'm very, very excited. To talk. <laughs> All right, mm -hmm. I want to head back to our live classes for one more round, uh, and then we'll uh, wrap up from there. So, Miss Armada's group, come on back up. We have a second question. Okay, Sophia's coming right up. Go ahead, Judy. If they can see in the dark, how do they get hit by stuff? Well, that's actually a really nice question. So, for example, with the windows. Um, birds, they cannot tell the difference between a window and real life. If there's a window right here behind me, of course, it's going to be really, really difficult for some birds to see that there's a window, especially if there are like trees and stuff like that behind that window or also the windows that resemble um, like mirrors for example that are in a lot of buildings a lot of birds there's an estimate that almost a billion birds die in the united states due to uh, window collisions so you see those really high skyscrapers and all of those really tall buildings with lots of windows all around their building and just imagine how many birds, they confuse that building with the sky or um, with a part of their environment and everything. So it's really, really tough on them. So if it's during the night, it's even harder for the owls to tell that difference. Um, with the wires and the fences, since the fences are so small, um, it's also really hard for them to actually see uh, like those fences. And also owls, they focus mostly entirely on their prey. So if they're focusing on a mouse that they want to catch, they're only seeing that mouse. 
they're not seeing what's in between their environment and everything. So that's why it is really easy for them to bump into windows and cars and fences. Yeah. Great answer. Uh, we've never gotten that question either. Mr. Modestize, you guys are killing it with unique questions today. I love it. Um, yeah. Class, come on back up. Hey, guys. And then we're going to miss Scaff to wrap up in a second. <laughs> Do two cans uh, eat it whole or chew it up? Did you catch? How did they chew? Yeah, did they chew things up or did they just swallow things whole? They actually swallow them. They cannot chew things up. So I might like, again the macaws. They have a really strong beak that they use to crack open seeds and you know eat them and um, destroy them basically. Toucans, even though their bills are really uh, big. They're not that strong. So if they try to crack open a nut, they probably will break their bill. Um, there are some cases where you can see toucans with half of their beak um, or just a teeny part of it. Um, sometimes it's because people, they start throwing rocks at them, so they break their bills, of course. Um, it has happened a couple of times here in Costa Rica, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, they basically swallow them as a whole. So that's actually a really nice question because here when we get to feed them, like for example, when we give them the papaya chunks, we have to cut them a little smaller than that we would give them to the macaws and the parrots. Yeah, how cool is that? I love yeah. the, the level of animal care you guys have there. Again, it, it's such a cool <laughs> every single time. Really amazing organization you guys have. Miss <laughs> uh, Gaff, come on in, wrap us up with one final question. And come then... on, Roger, what, what is a good one? What do you guys have? Hmm. Miss Gap, could you repeat that for us? Where are tokens from? Where are two where, where do they come from? Yeah. Where do they come from around the world? So I mean we have them in They're all over. Them. I like that guy. <laughs> Okay, so well, you can have you can find the toucans here in Central America, South America, and in some islands on the Caribbean. So of course you can see them here in Costa Rica. You can also see them in Nicaragua, Panama, Belize, um, in Mexico as well, and also in the Amazon forest in Brazil, Argentina, Colombia. And uh, there are also toucans that live high on the mountains, and those are pretty awesome toucans. So as I said, there are 40 different species of toucans that can be found all around this area of the Americas. We, as always, have more questions than we could possibly take in one <laughs> Great, so thank you so much to our YouTube viewers, to our live classes. Uh, really quickly, before we wrap up, I did want to highlight again, if you checked out that video that was half audible at the beginning of the presentation, uh, you guys can check out uh, uh, earthrangers.org. Let me bring up the website for us right now. So earthrangers.com, uh, if you want to check that out, uh, sign up for the app, use the code MILLY from today. It'll go a long way to helping your kids get engaged, get involved, help protect biodiversity, like our awesome toucans today. And of course, the main way you guys can do that with today's broadcast is to check out toucanrescueranch.org. So much stuff going on, so many amazing programs. We'll be having them throughout the year, so please come join us again. And uh, thank you so much, Andrea, for such an awesome tour today. No, thank you so much, Jesse. And yeah, we got you guys. We are definitely waiting for you. If you want any other virtual tours, if you want to support us, there are so many ways on how you guys can support us as a classroom, even. And if you like the slots, like the ones on the background, stay tuned, Cassie. In the last um, week of October, we're going to have the Sloth Ironman Games. It is a really nice fundraiser. Um, it's with the baby sloths when we put them to do some natural behaviors. So stay tuned because it's going to be so much fun. <laughs> oh, we certainly can't wait. And as you know, what we do at the end of every broadcast, I'm going to bring in our live class. So Mr. Armada, Mr. Rini, Ms. Scaff, do you guys want to get ready to join me in, in saying a big thank you and farewell to Andrea and the two yeah. Thank you so much, everyone.